This is part two of our love series. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 4 and 5 says, Love is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. As you know, as we're making our way through these characteristics, it kind of provides like a, a tonic to our souls to not be, um, you know, listening to the, what the world says about love. It says this, love is not arrogant or rude. It's interesting that many of the characteristics about love in this list are presented negatively, right? It's not this. See, love is be, being described as what it is not because we are not naturally bent towards what the Bible says about love. We're actually, in our culture, um, inflate things that are opposed to love, like arrogance and rudeness is actually celebrated in our culture. Right now, if you look at politics, it's all about being arrogant and rude and winning the war. And we see that all around us where people can't even... Uh, like the opposing car you know, candidate, you know, you can't wear a red hat or you can't wear Biden sunglasses, you know, because people think that that's a hate crime against them. Love is not arrogant or rude. It's not puffing yourself up. It's not thinking more highly of yourself. Rudeness is translated as acting unseemly or unbecomingly. When you think more about yourself, life becomes about yourself. You wrap yourself up into a universe of one. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love doesn't insist on its own way. It's not self-willed. It's not self-protective. It's not self-serving. It's not all about me, myself, and I. It's not looking out for number one. We have to stop insisting on our ways and our wants if we're going to be loving to others. Don't always give our opinion on subjects. Sometimes one of the best things that you can do with someone is just to sit and listen. And not really even give an opinion, but listen and let the person reflect and explain where they're going. Maybe that's how you're going to love today and not insisting in your own way. Love is not irritable. Uh, Paul is calling on us to not be easily prov provoked, not to have short fuses, but long ones to be like, it takes a lot to get me stirred up. But too often in our culture, we are offended at the slightest little thing. Let me just tell you this. We have no right to not be offended. Do you understand what I mean by that? It seems like in our culture, it's like, I have a right not to be offended. There are a lot of things that offend us each and every day, but we need to take those things to the Lord and love him and, and, and look out in love to our neighbors. Love is not irritable. It's not resentful. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. A lot of times we're like, yeah, I remember what that person did to me. You know how you, you stop keeping a record of wrongs is by taking those things and forgiving that person, which means this. It means, look, I'm not going to bring it up to them. I'm not going to bring it up to others. And I'm not going to continue to bring it up to myself. I'm going to keep bringing those things to God. And so love is, is, it's not irritable. It's not resentful. It's not keeping a record of wrongs. I hope you've noticed that there's a pattern in these traits. They all begin with a focus on self. Love is not this. See, love isn't about your wants and needs. Love is not ab uh, about what you want to do. It's about serving and not being served. Love reaches out knowing that it may not be reciprocated. Love is a reflection of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross dying for your sins. Do you want to love like Jesus? then you need to sacrificially love. You know why we say the end of all of our service, this phrase, you are loved? It's to remind us that you are loved by God so that you would love others as an outflow of that love. Hope that you understand that today and keep growing in love. We'll finish this series next week.